Jax. It's a light heavyweight showcase between Forrest Griffin and Rampage Jackson. history, the man known as Rampage. For five years, Rampage was a superstar in Japan, and he's been outstanding during his UFC career. The highlight being when he earned the UFC light heavyweight belt. This guy has devastating one-punch knockout power amongst the very best in the world at delivering a single blow to end the fight. Jackson enters the octagon, and he's ready to fight. Boris <laughs> Griffin, the former police officer in Athens, Georgia, fought professionally for the first time against Dan Severn. He lost a three-round decision. But years later, he is a true star and a Hall of Famer winning the first season of The Ultimate Fighter and becoming one of the few Ultimate Fighter winners to earn a UFC championship. Forrest Griffin went on from The Ultimate Fighter season one to become the UFC light heavyweight champion. His work ethic is second to none. His sense of humor is second to none. And he is a loved fighter, both in and out of the octagon. Our tale of the tape. For this light heavyweight fight, Griffin is 33, Jackson is 36. Griffin will have a four inch reach advantage. With the official introductions, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC light heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Boxer, holding professional record of 35 wins, 11 losses. He's at 60 foot is tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Irvine, California. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the former UFC light heavyweight champion, Winton Rampage Jackson! And now to the season opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is an ex martial artist, holding a professional record of. 19 wins, 7 losses. He stands 6 feet 3 inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, presenting the member of the UFC Hall of Fame and the former UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, Paul Rose. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean will be our referee. You ready to fight? You ready? Let's and here we go. Tonight's fight is scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Black trunks for Jackson. White trunks for Griffin. Quentin Jackson is known for his thunderous punching power, particularly his overhand right. Man, he connects with the right and the left. Oh, he tagged him with that straight. He connects on a nice combination. He timed that perfectly. Griffin got caught by that left. He connects with that knee. He's looking for that right hand, Mike. Jackson with a strong elbow to the head. That's a good straight punch. These guys are... He's got it hard! Whoa! Cut misses. There he is. Got the takedown. There he now he passes over. Pass over to half guard. Very nicely done, Mike. 
Excellent movement and transitions here on the ground. Staying busy. Side control. Nicely done. He's working the arm here. He's transitioning to the arm bar from the Kimura. Break the grip. That's it. That's it. It's all over. Great job in establishing that submission. Let's check out the action on our fight replay. Great win here. Got the submission on the arm, and it was all over. And one more time from this angle, we can see that arm bar locked in tight for the tap. And one more time, nice technique here on this submission. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop to this contest at 1 minute 47 seconds in the very first round. Declaring the winner by tap out due to an armbar. Forrest Griffin, your winner by submission. champion, B.J. Penn. B.J. Penn, the fastest American to ever achieve black belt level in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and the most decorated Jiu-Jitsu athlete in America. He is the prodigy. B.J. Penn. B.J. Penn fighting at lightweight, fighting at welterweight, and even going up as high as heavyweight in his career has proven that he is willing to fight anyone, anywhere, at any time. B.J. Penn steps inside the octagon, and he's ready to fight. He is one of the true legends of the Octagon. The Hall of Famer, Matt Hughes, the two-time former UFC welterweight champion, began his Octagon career back in 1999. Matt Hughes loves to take his opponent down, put him on his back, and finish the fight with his vicious ground and pound. Matt Hughes is obviously legendary for his wrestling skills, a UFC Hall of Famer, and a longtime welterweight champ. He's incredibly strong for a 170 pounder, has great submissions, and he's fought and beaten the very best in the world. Matt Hughes, set to fight the prodigy, BJ Penn. Our tale of the tape for this welterweight fight. Penn is 28, Hughes is 34. He will have a three-inch reach advantage. Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. A jiu-jitsu fighter, only professional record of 16 wins, 10 losses, and two draws. He stands five feet nine inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Hilo, Hawaii. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the former UFC lightweight champion and former UFC welterweight champion, the Prodigy, BJ Penn. And now we're going to see his opponent fighting out of the right corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of 46 wins, 9 losses. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Fighting out of Hillsborough, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a 
member of the UFC Hall of Fame and the former UFC welterweight champion of the world. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Loving. Eve Loving, our referee. You ready? You ready? And here we go. Fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds. White trunks for Pat, green trunks for Hughes. Matt Hughes had talked about his stand-up and wanting to, to earn a knockout victory and trying to work his stand-up in different fights earlier in his career, Joe. And I remember him telling me, though, that if the takedown was there, he could not stop himself from going into wrestling mode. Well, he had such a huge strength uh, in his wrestling and his grappling abilities, big to hold, the ability to hold guys down, that he fed off that advantage, and he didn't bother to really build up the other aspect of the game, the, the striking aspect. Matt Hughes' striking was always a notch below his wrestling ability. And there's a nice straight by Penn. Wow, what a great job mixing things up. Trying to shoot. Both men looking <laughs> to do damage early. And another strike lands. Oh, he ah, completes the suit down, man. He's got his back here, Joe. He's doing a great job of ground and pound here. Ripping to the body and to the head, staying busy. Excellent posture. Side control. Push off an elbow. He's just left left with hand. a huge left. Really nice movement on the ground. He's now working from side control again. Look at that, he's got it locked up. From the north-south position to get the choke, what he wants to do is get his arm under the back of the neck. Once he's got the arm under the back of the neck, locking it in place, he needs to get his left hand and his right hand together. So he has to move the... He got it! Oh, it's it. over! It is all over! Use great technique to get the choke and get the win. Joe, here's the finish on our fight replay. Let's see it again here. Got the choke, it's in deep, and no choice but to tap. And here we can see it again. That's a real tight choke here. And here we see it again. Beautiful submission victory. And here's Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Ian Levine's called a stop to this contest at two minutes, four seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by tap out, Matt Hughes! Matt Hughes, winner by submission. strikers in UFC history. He earned 16 career wins inside the octagon. The former UFC light heavyweight champion scored four successful title defenses, all by knockout. 
Chuck Liddell will go down in history of one of the greatest fighters in the history of the UFC. The UFC light heavyweight champion during his reign was one of the most feared fighters in the sport with devastating knockout victories of the elite of the elite of his era. Bad intention, very focused, well prepared, and looking for a big victory tonight. This guy has world-class takedown defense. He is incredibly difficult to take down, and once you do get him down, he gets back to his feet very swiftly. Bad intention. Set to battle the Iceman, Chuck Liddell. Our tail of the tape for this light heavyweight fight. Liddell is 38, Bad Intentions is 41. Liddell will have a three inch reach advantage. Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds of the UFC. Light heavyweight division. Introducing the fighting at the big one. This man is a kickboxer, holding a professional record of 21 wins, 8 losses. He stands 62 inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of San Luis Obispo, California, presenting the member of the UFC Hall of Fame and the former UFC Light Heavyweight Champion, the... And now introducing his opponent, fighting at the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, making his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Huntington Beach, California, USA, Man Intention. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Mario Yamasaki. Mario Yamasaki, our referee for this light heavyweight bout. Here tonight in Las Vegas, Nevada. Three round fight. Blue trunks for the Dell. Black trunks for bad intentions. The Iceman, Chuck Liddell, still Joe, one of the most feared strikers in the history of the UFC. He has ruthless knockout power in each hand and each foot, and he's very confident about it. That's one of the things that makes him so dangerous is that he absolutely knows all he has to do is connect and you go out. Good job of timing this combination of strikes here. To the body. Great takedown defense right there. Very nicely done. Oh, my goodness! And right back to side control. Look at that, right to the temple. Good one, two. Both men came out hard. Nice shot. He caught the kick. Beat him to the side. Nice jab. There oh, it is. Oh, look at that. Oh, what an exchange. Man, he just missed. Oh, that caught him. Huge takedown. Oh, what a take suplex. Down. Now he moves to full guard. Yeah. Yeah. Able to just get out of the way. Good defense with the parry. Joe, three minutes remain in the round. To the body. Knee to the midsection. It's a good block, and he counters with the left hook. 
Under three on the clock, round one. Bad intentions with a solid right. Both men landing in that exchange. Liddell with a strong hook to the body. He's taking some shots, Mike. And he looks for the takedown. Bad intentions gets it back to guard. He was looking for the head kick, but it was blocked. Good defense, and he counters with a jab. Joni lands another takedown here. Outstanding wrestling. Yeah, no doubt about that one. Under two minutes on the clock here. In the full guard. Staying busy on the ground. Push him off! Push him off! Now he's stacking him. Joe, look for him to try to set up a takedown here. Roundhouse kick. Oh, oh head head kick. It's a kick. Oh, 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 head kick. Oh, oh, kick. oh, oh kick. He heard him. The Two kick lands. He's hurt. He's, he's down. down. Oh, that's a heavy body kick. I like that, Mike. I like how he's mixing Big it up. Big shot. seconds now. He postures up. Liddell with a nice strike from the bottom. Hip escape. Gets out of the full mount. There he goes. Back Joe to mount, mount again. 15 seconds. That's a solid strike. Liddell's eye looks so swollen now. You have to wonder if he suffered a fractured orbit. He's digging into that leg kick. Round one comes to a close. Chuck Liddell's chin was tested. He was knocked down in that round. Very scary moment. And without a doubt, he was in big trouble. We've been working on this all day long. You got... Here's a vicious kick that results in a knockdown. Let's see it here again. And here we see it from another camera angle. The lovely Brittany getting a set for round number two. Here you go, second round. You ready? You ready? Let's round go. two. Comes out swinging. Liddell switches to the southpaw stance. Look at the knockdowns landed so far, Joe. Good right left. <laughs> Even I saw that one coming. That's a hard hook. Wow! Body kick, look at that. Oh! Oh, oh big right hand. Right. Strong jab. Oh, big combination. There's a left that connects. Oh, nice knee. Wow, another big jab scores. Nice. Good pressure. 
He sees that coming and parries it away. Good pro fighters always move well side to side. The huge head kick is blocked. Oh, he lands the roundhouse to the box. Nice kicks. Good connection with the straight by Liddell. Wow, what a back and forth exchange. The kick to the body is parried. Nice slip of the left. Fainting with that kick. Head kick. Nicely done. Oh, wow. he landed an uppercut. There's a nice combination. Oh, that head kick landed. He is in big trouble here. Oh, very nice. Look at his position now. Big takedown. Win the scramble. Win the scramble. We have reached the midway point of this fight. He's looking to pass here, Joe. The swelling in his eyes is starting to get worse. He's got some space now. He's posturing up. Trying to take the back here. Two minutes. He works his way to over under. Double under hooks here. And he pulls away. Good left Ten. back and forth. Bad intentions with the kick to the midsection. Head kick! Nice knee there. Turning into an all-out slugfest. Big power jam. Left kick to the body. Oh, he takes down. him down. One minute remains. Let's go hard. That's a solid left hook. Push kick. Chuck Liddell lands big one. He has finished so many fights, Joe, over the years with that overhand right. And why? because he sets it up so brilliantly with his footwork. Utilizes his jab, and then boom, the fight is over. Oh, he caught him. Hard hook. Bad intentions with a strong combination. He's doing a great job of being unpredictable and mixing things up here. He landed a huge uppercut. Oh, what a combination. How good is this? Joe, that was a brutal knee to the body. Good combination. Back and forth battle. Throwing with reckless abandon. What a round. Oh, great round. Hey, you heard him. Right? You heard him, okay? Listen, next round is very simple. Here's a perfect kick to the body. Here's a devastating kick that does some serious damage. Here's a powerful head kick that lands. Ariani getting a set for round number three. Final round, final round. you ready? You ready? Let's Five go, minutes go. remain in the fight. He's definitely going to want to start this round off fast and try to pick up where he left off. His opponent was in big trouble at the end of that round. That's a solid leg kick. He connects with the straight right. Man, a ton of damage has been done, and his left eye is really starting to swell up. Good kick. He lands 
a head kick. Huge kick. Hard left hand. Oh! That hurt him. Back and forth battle. Oh, he's landed some good shots here. Oh, stunning jab. He hurt him with that hook. Oh, another good body shot. Joey's really starting to do some damage. Tags him. That huge head kick was blocked. Joey might be looking to take the fight to the ground once again. Oh, very nicely done. Standing and trading. Exactly what we had hoped for. Good straight punch. Very nice leg kick by Liddell. Joe with little time left. This is a very close fight. This fight could go either way. Someone has to step up and make it theirs. Chuck Liddell's opponent has to do a much better job at protecting that cut. He certainly is targeting that cut. He's like a shark. He smells blood, and he's trying to open that thing up. Bad intentions with a good jab. Three minutes left in the fight. He faints with the kick. Liddell gets hit with that kick to the midsection. Nice jab. Great kick by bad intentions. Man, that cut on his nose continues to get worse and is really pouring blood now. One, two. Bad intentions with the kick to the body. He's doing a really good job of timing these shots. Bad intentions with the left. There's the late kick. Very nice kicks. He caught him with the head kick. Oh, that one hurt him. Just two minutes remain in the fight. Good one, too, by Liddell. Great exchanges. He's down. Quick inside leg kick by bad intentions. Nice left, left kick to the body. Connected there. Liddell gets nailed by that head kick. Nice, nice straight left. Look at that. Take your time. Take your time. Bad intentions with the front kick. He's got full guard here. Let's see what he can do from here. He hip escapes. He's out of the full mount. Mount again. Bad intentions. His eyes are both starting to swell up. He's got some time to work here. 45 seconds. He's doing a great job of moving and transitioning here on the ground. He's got his back here. He's trying to attack here with a rear naked choke. And he got his head up. Half guard. Bad intentions with a strong kick. Look at this. Nice hook to the body by bad intentions. Beautiful jab. This what one goes the distance. What a battle. It was a back and forth battle. Worthy of fight of the night consideration. Now all we wait for is to find out which fighter will have his hand. That was a great fight. When two fighters are really talented and evenly matched, that's the kind of fight that you get. And I really enjoyed it. Round three, and this punch sneaks through to score.
And here's Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. All three judges score this contest for 928. For the winner by unanimous decision, Chuck the Iceman Liddell! Chuck Liddell earns the unanimous decision victory. It's a middleweight matchup between Hoist Gracie and Crusher. Crusher coming off a strong training camp. He is pumped up and ready to go. This guy has an incredible ability to control fighters. It's extremely frustrating for the man on the bottom, but once he gets the fight to the ground, oftentimes that is where the fight will remain. Royce Gracie makes his way out of the tunnel, and he looks ready to go. Royce Gracie is the original Ultimate Fighter. He is the man that showed the world that technique and intelligence can defeat brawn and size. Set to fight Crusher. Our tail of the tape for this middleweight fight. Crusher is six years his elder. Gracie will have a three-inch reach advantage. Once again, here's the veteran voice of the octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a wrestler. Make his professional debut here tonight. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Reno, Nevada, Russia. And now to his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 13 wins, two losses, and two draws. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 185 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Ladies and gentlemen, he is a member of the UFC Hall of Fame, Horse Racing. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Eve Lavigne. Eve Lavigne, our referee. You ready? You ready? And we are underway. Fight scheduled for three five minute rounds. Black trunks for Crusher. Blue trunks for Gracie. Joe Hoist Gracie, the most dominant champion of the UFC in the very early days. He was the first pioneer for this sport. Hoist Gracie changed the way Americans and the rest of the world look at fighting. He completely changed people's idea about the importance of submission and the ground game. He connects with the straight. He just slipped the left. Now we have ourselves a fist fight. 
Comes right back. Lands a nice left. Great job defending the double leg takedown. Changing stances. Good combination. Beautiful right hand. Oh! Nice parry there. Joey's making a miss, and he's making him pay. Outstanding counter strike. Absolutely. Joey's sizing up his opponent. He's checking out the range. He wants to see him commit first so that he can score with those counters. Good counter with the right hook. <laughs> Closing the distance. He's got the clinch, Joe. And from here, transitions to the Muay Thai clinch. Gracie's got double underhooks. And right into the Muay Thai clinch. Gracie's knee is blocked. Tying him up here in the clinch. Yeah. Under three on the clock, round one. He's in a better position here with the tie clinch. Crusher with a knee to the leg. They split. Crusher with a good connection. They are exchanging here, Mike. Goes for a single. Oh, and down. What a brilliant pass. Right into Mount. Excellent job. Really good movement on the ground. The mount again. Crusher gives up his back. Right to half guard. He's working from full mount again. Looking for the arm bar, looking for the finish. He's in full mount here. He's looking for the arm bar. First thing he wants. He pulled his arm out of it. Crazy with some nice ground impact. He's looking to crank on that arm here. He got his arm free. And he postures up. Oh, Joe, that one busted him wide open. Yeah, he tagged him with that one, Mike, and the blood is starting to flow. Getting in position for an arm bar. He's got the arm here. Now he's going to throw his leg over. Throw the leg over the face. He may have to tap any second now. This arm bar is very tight. That was a deep arm bar, but a beautiful escape. Side control. He's working over under here. And they separate. Gracie with a hook to the body. And he gets the takedown. Man, he's got the reversal. in a full guard here. Grabs a hold of the wrist, pins it down from here. He's looking for the Kimura. He wants to wrap. He yanked out of the Kimura. He lands a big shot from the bottom. And now it moves into full guard. Man, he can't take too many of those body shots. Both men landing in that exchange. He scores with the leg kick. And that'll be the end of round number one. Let's take a look at some of the action here. And here we see some beautiful submission offense here. Let's see this again. And let's take a look at that from a different camera. The beautiful Brittany. Oh, 
ready? You ready? Round two. Joe, that fight was nearly over in the last round. Boyce Gracie's submission attempt was very tough. That was a very close submission attempt and almost the end of the fight. Crusher switching to southpaw. Look at that, he's timing that jab. Nice roundhouse kick to the body. Man, we have seen so many lethal body shots. It makes you wonder how he is still in this fight. Crusher gets caught by the kick to the midsection. Unbelievable. Oh, that's some wrestling right there. Half guard. Now he's in guard. Oh, tries for a triangle. Grabs his ankle, pulls down on his shin. He switches to the arm bar, rolls him over on his back. That is pretty tight, Mike. Yeah, and he's really cranking on it. Oh, oh it's over! It is over! Oh! Wow! Excellent technique here. Got the arm bar and got the tap. Time now for our fight replay. And we see here, as soon as this arm bar gets locked in, there is no escape. Perfect technique, tremendous pressure. And one more time from this angle, we can see that arm bar locked in tight for the tap. And finally, one more time, no choice but to tap. And here he is with the official decision. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Ian LeBing has called a stop to this contest at 58 seconds of round number two. Declaring the winner by tap out, Hoist Gracie. Hoist Gracie gets the submission victory here tonight. At age 20, he fought 16 times, won the first 14 fights by knockout, 13 in the very first round. Ross Rutten is a ferocious striker out of Holland. He's always had very good submission skills as well, and he's a real pioneer in mixed martial arts. He's the former king of Pancras, he's a former UFC heavyweight champion, and he is one of the most dangerous knockout artists in this sport. Everything he throws, he throws to knock you dead. Very confident that he will come away with a victory tonight. This guy has incredible takedown defense. Out of all the fighters in the UFC, he's amongst the most difficult to get to the mat. Light heavyweight fight. Ferocious is 11 years his elder. Root is one inch tall. He will have a nine inch reach advantage. Once again, here's the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of 
the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb D. And now, this is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. Man, we've waited a long time for these two men to meet in the center of the octagon. Ferocious. Boss Rutten. And here we go! Five. Five-minute rounds. Black trunks for Rutten. White trunks for Ferocious. Now, he's taking some punishment here early, Joe. Vicious combinations. Excellent work from the top by Ferocious. And full back. Excellent movement here on the ground. Into the full guard. Full guard here. Nice work from the bottom by Root. He's trying to pass here. Ferocious gets caught with the left. He's back in the full guard now. Under three. Uh-oh. He mounts. He's going to be able to posture up. Posture up. Lands a elbow. huge elbow to the head. Looks like he's got his arm locked up. Almost had the arm bar. Get on the side. Get on the side. Don't let him keep you flat. You gotta move. Don't be flat. Here's a little piece of trivia for folks who don't know. The reason why you're not allowed to do a downward elbow, 12 to 6, is because when they first brought mixed martial arts to athletic commissions, the people on the commission said, well, you can't let someone do that. I saw people break bricks with that on ESPN. <laughs> In reality, there's really very little difference between a downward elbow or a 45 degree elbow or, or what have you. Half guard. Under two. That's a good kick. Solid leg kick.
change his stance. Oh, nice kick to the liver. Look at that! Oh my! He's hurt, he's down! Big oh, right he blocked him with that right hand. Oh, that hook did damage. Big kick misses. Clean inside leg kick. Just 20 seconds remain. Half guard right now. He blocks the big knee to the body. Solid straight punch. Ferocious his eyes looking really swollen there. You've got to wonder whether or not it's actually a fractured orbital. Here we get a look at some of the action from that round. Here's a vicious kick that results in a knockdown. Let's take a look at that from a different angle. And here it is from another angle. And the lovely Brittany gets us started for round number two. You ready to fight? You ready? Round two. At the end of that round, his opponent was clearly hurt. He's going to look to start this round off fast and try to pick up where he left off. Good block, and he delivers the straight counter. Take a look at the knockdowns landed here, Joe. Oh, very nicely done. Just misses with the left. And he parries it. Big right hand, a left hand rather. Good back and forth battle. And look again, once again, he doesn't get hit, and he scores with a combination. Joe, it's very interesting to watch him work his counter strike. He waits patiently for his opponent to strike first, and then he answers big time. Lands a trip and gets him on the ground. The amount of damage that has been done to his body makes you wonder if he's got a broken rib or two. Full guard. And he reverses position. Nice sweep. Oh, he connected with that right hand. Root with the combination. Huge oh, big elbow. elbow. Joey has switched to the southpaw stance. 
Good roundhouse. Back and forth. Good slip of that punch. He's really mixing things up tonight. Good defense, and he counters with a straight. And he's taken down by Root. Guillotine attempt. And now he's out. And he slips to half guard. Full guard here. He hits him with a hammer fist. Really good movement on the ground. Job blocking the head kick. Stuffed it. Stuffed it. Root with a good knee to the body. I need you to push now. Those feints are the key to a strike center. 45 seconds on the clock in the round. Mixing things up. Big swing and a miss by Ferocious. Nicely done. Very clean turn. Just 30 seconds remain in the round. That's a good kick to the body by Ruth. Nice kicks. Good defense there. Root counters with the right. He looks for the single but can't get it. Oh, nice. Ton of quickness possessed by both of these men. Good knee by Ferocious. They separate. Ah, oh, that's a big hook. And he continues to mix up his strikes. Round two in the books. Man, you make me feel good about myself. Look here. Is this a boxing match? Or is this a... All right, let's check out some of the action from that round. Here we see a perfectly timed kick. Connects flush. And here's another clean shot that lands. And here we see excellent timing with this trip. Amazing highlights from that round. The lovely Ariani here tonight inside the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Good roundhouse kick to the midsection. Comes out swinging. That's a huge body shot. Nice leg kick. Wow, he goes down. Solid leg kick by Ferocious. Man, the damage to his thigh continues to get worse. He's going to be walking with a limp for a while. Who's in a half guard? Nicely done. Yeah. Let's go. Get him off. Get him off. And back to full guard. Yeah. Joe, that was a great transition. Right into side control. Rutten's looking for a choke. He's out of the arm triangle. Looking for an arm triangle here, perhaps, Mike. Got the arm secured. Scoots his hips back. Sprawls. He got it. He Hit got it. All over. Nicely done. Got caught in the choke. Didn't want to tap and went to sleep. 
Time now for our fight replay. And here we see the choke, and the referee had to jump in and stop this. And one last time, super tight choke, and he's out. And it's over before he even gets a chance to tap. With the official decision, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop in this contest at 1 minute, 19 seconds of the third round. For the winner, by submission, Ferocious! Ferocious earns the win by submission. And once again, a great night of fights. For my partner, Joe Rogan, this is Mike Goldberg saying so long until next time. We see you right back here, inside the Octagon. Swinging for the Texas Act is funky, boy.